think we're ready. I think we're ready. We're ready. That's so so. I'm Walter. Welcome to the Hotline of Diecast. I bought some cars. Welcome back to the show. Appreciate you guys tuning in, riding along. Tell you what, if you if you like what you see, hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, throw me in your channel lineup. It won't cost you a thing. You can always choose to cancel me out later. Thank you for those who choose to. Appreciate you. Appreciate you just being here, period. I uh, hope, hope you guys all have those full pegs. And if not, I'm sending those full peg vibes your way. And the cars you, you just saw, I got I picked up more. Let me pick up some more. Um, I'll show you what I got. Well, first one I'm really stoked on. Somehow I overlooked this uh, in a segment I did a little while back, and it was the Holden segment. And what I overlooked and forgot about was this 2008 Holden VE Ute, the super sport version. SSB. Matchbox did a great job on this casting. I'm not going to rush to open this one because I would like to keep this on card. You, you don't see too many of these. And uh, and I want to celebrate it. So I'd love to have one loose and one on the card. Stay in that fam. Found this other Matchbox. The Volvo XC40. Well, pardon me. Look. If it's on the card, it's for sale. That's it. And as well as I don't collect cardboard anymore. I don't. Not not telling you guys what you should do. Uh, I think there's a a beautiful diversity within our collectorship. There's also some some whack shit going on. I I, I can't I can't not mention that. But. Uh, What's not whack is some of the things Matchbox has been dropping of late. So like I say, this XC40 is more of your main uh, mainline issue from the brand. Maybe mid-tier, I guess. Love the side view mirrors, even though you know, they are what they are. But the amount of detail they were able to put on this casting, in retrospect, I think is awesome. Everybody complains that Hot Wheels doesn't do side view mirrors. No, they don't do it on some. So if you look at this XC40 Recharge, they've got them on there. It almost makes you wonder if they're using the same tooling as their their uh, brethren. But see the front in there, no headlights, as in where. But you get that front, that elephant killer grill um, with the fog lights. Obviously, really cool tampo deco on the side, and you get a, somewhat of a finished product on the back. But cool, it's Volvo, man. It's Volvo slept on brand. Doctors drive it because it's a smart car. It's that brand, and and they make some they make some super fast stuff. They really do. Stay in that fan. Oh, here's something I came across. I had a about. I picked up a Matchbox MR2. Now they are going to for the and I've, I've mentioned in a couple videos. Matchbox loves to do a four part variation of this car. 
and you can either find it in the old red in the matchbox uh celebratory cards and the teal you can find it in white in the main line as well as the uh, japan origins and they're going to be four variations every time you see this mr2 so this first one i showed you is the headlights down right hand drive if you can see that i will leave these on card at least until i complete the set and then the second one i got is headlights up left hand drive so the, the next two variants that I'll be looking for are headlights down, uh, left-hand drive, and headlights up, right-hand drive. And that'll complete your variants for Matchbox. Cool way to play and collect. Staying in the Matchbox. This seems to be a very highly sought after casting from uh, Matchbox for great reasons, because it is, it's a beaut, man. It's a real beaut. And just as good as that was, and I got these at Grocers, the Grocers still has some old stock, and they had this new for 2022 Porsche 911 GT3 as well. So these were both released in a uh, pretty close time to each other. Let me see. I don't always keep my Porsches on card. Sometimes I just get right into them because they are the brand that I get most excited about. But let's do a little comparison. So here's the Matchbox 911 GT3. Beautiful headlights. Got a little hood ornament or logo on there. These five stars. Got the GT3 on the back as well as the finished license plate. And uh, license plate says, says something. Damn it. GT3 911. Outstanding. Now I'm just going to leave these on. And right behind that is that new for 2022 HW release. Now what's exciting about this one, or what I what I, what I prefer for on this version is A, it's all black. And Hot Wheels don't make all black cars that often. Well, I guess the wheels are, are gray. You know you can spell gray two different ways? You probably do. G-R-E-Y, G-R-A-Y. One's the English version, one's the British version. There you go. Maybe that answer that question will win you a game show one day. And there you go there. And these plates also say the same, 911 GT3, just in a little different application. So I, I, think, I think we could blend both worlds and really make a better product. What's cool about the Matchbox, a little more detailed base versus a basic base there but we could have taken that gt3 logo you see there and also added it to the hw but matchbox could have also made a larger hood ornament to make it a little more recognizable and, and celebrate the brand but none of the matter you see those cars you buy them but I'm not telling you what to do but if you see those cars you holler at me so i can go buy them for us so, mm. There's a random find at Target, like behind the cars on the shelf. Fast and Furious 5 pack, which is rad because I literally just um, uh, sold one to uh, a friend, Adam, works at the O'Reilly's, real cool guy and a collector and very specific collector too, like that. But he needed needed a loose uh, Supra and it's like, man, I can help you out, bro. But being how I had the two variations to that five pack, I was kind of leery about letting one go. But then at the end of that, I was like, you know what? Let me help. Let me help the homie out. And so I did. And I guess my gracious reward was having the opportunity to find another one. And in that same opportunity, and dang near, you know, six inches away from it. And as I was praising, parading, excuse me, and and praising the Target shelf, um, I stumbled across. The Porsche, the Euro hauler, and its compadre, the 959. OMG. Only one there, and it wasn't on the peg, it was just sitting on the shelf. Look at that 95. Look, they look, they armor all the tires. There's some, there's some, it seems to be some sort of thought into the product they're putting out now a little more at HW. I believe they've been ridiculed and criticized uh, quite a bit from everyone, but 
they're doing their best to to uh, I think to really appease all uh, all one six four diecast collectors. This nine five nine is epic. Now Hot Wheels has made oh gosh I, I don't even know how many they've been putting this out since nineteen eighty six and almost never missed a year because this is the first supercar. I mean, look, they even gave it windshield wipers. Oh, it's well done piece. And as excited as I am about that, the Euro hauler is really exciting to me. I I love this transport. Uh, and we, we've only seen a few of them. Uh, gosh, where have we seen it? Um, oh, crap. First saw it, I think. Was this the first time we saw it? I think we first saw it in Team Transport number 21. Ooh, that 300 SL with the IWC treatments and that Euro hauler. Oh, that's where else we saw it. And then I think most recently is in, pardon me, I probably could have just said it, but in the track day diorama. What a very unique hauler to have. And, uh, and, and it's spot on. It's, it's, it definitely goes with the theme of the transport. So thank you guys for doing that and paying so much attention. It just really makes it pleasant. And, and yeah, it's open because it's a Porsche and, and, and I was quick to open it. You know, I, I enjoy that part. Uh, I know, uh, and, and I, I always visit and I really enjoy this place. I, I, I used to like to donate cars there, but now I, I, I go for a little smaller type venues. So I go to like the women's shelters or the bread box, but I used to donate a lot of cars to Goodwill. And obviously a lot of people still do because I get to buy some. So I went to Goodwill and I uh, found this hauler, which is like a store and play thing. You know, the truck actually rolls and has a little fun front shoot out there. I think it used to come to tracks. You can see this is the method in which you can store it. Now, what really got me excited and the reason I didn't pass it by is the opposite side. You can see there's all the cars that we just recently played with. And I'm excited that they thought to give us a couple different size bins. So if you, you consider the uh, Hot Wheels Legends Tour winner, taller car won't fit in your normal hole, as well as one of the coolest cars that you probably don't know about from from the 80s and it's this rodzilla the rodzilla i mean silver gold seven spokes look at it it, it it is special it really is really is 1987 this came out now what's a unique special feature of this piece and i just realized that it's not doing it is uh the dragon head is actually on a swivel and spin so you can you can turn it around and put it in whatever direction you like now this one's not i'm not going to force it because i will cry on camera if i broke that so i'm not going to force it but the rodzilla if you guys got one or you see one don't pass it by it's a cool car it's got like a good ten dollar resale value if not more shoot i would pay more if i didn't have one in my collection i think it's like a 15 dollar car and that's unfortunate because we don't really have a standard pricing like uh, like 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 we used to. Or if you if you've been a collector in the mid '90s and earlier, you know there was like a collective pricing guide and or area. But we all know it's worth whatever whomever will pay for it, and that's that's the game we're in right now. So. Really happy to have this hauler. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the Rodzilla. And then lastly, at that that Goodwill, you know, I just saw the colors, you know, you see that blue and orange, you know, it's Hot Wheels something. I didn't quite know what it was, uh, but it, I was gravitated towards, you can see the Hot Wheels badge on the top. And what this is, is one of their old, like, uh, uh, play in stores. And it, what does it say, driver on there, racetrack, you see? We paid a couple few bucks. You can, you can make your hobby really fun for a lot less money. And on an upcoming episode, we're going to talk about where to buy Hot Wheels and how to get them on the cheap. Now, what's cool about this is I've been looking for storage because 
I'm free in these jumps. I'm letting them go, man. Uh, if it's on the card, it's for sale. And there's a bunch of cards I have on the card that aren't going to be for sale. And those are... Well, shit, they're mine. <laughs> so, there's that. that. That sounded really aggro, but that's the truth. What's cool about this is I, I learned that it actually is a 20 car. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. There's cars in there. But it can hold 20 cars. And the function of it is... It's a racetrack, so the idea is when you pull that, the shelving up, you unfold your track, and as you pull the cars out, they will, it's going to make a mess, hit the track, and do that, which is rad. Oh, here's a really cool piece, the under, or excuse me, the urban toe, it's one of the cool cars that was left in there, forgot about it. I don't think there's any more. Are you probably curious what else came out of there? Um, this thing. I can't quite remember where I've seen this a billion times, but one of those models. Radical Racer. What else came out of there? Oh. Not sure which casting that is, but that was in there. I'm not a Hot Wheels historian. I'm not... To, to better understand me and where my knowledge comes from, I love cars, and to be able to affordably buy a replica of those cars is what my attraction is here. And when I do find those replicas, I'm just as curious about the casting as I am about the real car. So I go down that hole, and and um, so that's where my knowledge comes from, is actually just being in a hobby, practicing the hobby. We'll talk about that a little later. But this was a really cool pickup. I get to store 20 cars in there. And I don't... I want to obviously commit it to something. And I think my Jaguar... Jaguar, depends on where you're from, might be the brand that goes in there. Because I think I have just under 20 cars. So it'll fit really comfortably. I'm really liking this idea of letting them go. Freeing them, you know, it... I think they I think they display better obviously uh, and real truth is if it's on the card it's for sale I mean a lot of cars we keep on the card because it's such a limited card or the artworks epic or what have you but it's in its, it's gonna remain in its best sales condition and that's cool we should definitely resell some trade some whenever you have that opportunity or, or, or whatever it suits you that's cool you know you know, sometimes you got to rely on that market because you don't always, you can't always find cars. All the cars I just showed you, I didn't find them in one store. I had to, there's a couple Wallys, a Target, and a uh, grocer, you know, and, and so I did. It made those moves. And in fact, I forgot I got more at Target. Got these. Stanley Tumblers. And the amount of slack I've caught for this and posting it, it's laughable. It's cute, actually. And we're gonna talk about it in the war report. The, uh, the state of the hobby. By my, my calculations and numbers, the great exodus has begun. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I, I, I'm noticing a lot of tourist collectors and those are people that you, you already knew they were only going to be in it for a short while they just they, they're not here for a long time they were just here for a good time your COVID collectors they saw value in the die cast market when we were trapped in our homes and the reselling of them um now the resale market is saturated with other sellers and hobbyists that do the same. So those guys are kind of bleeding out. Um, and then you got the, and it's sad because these are the poor critters that actually want to be in a hobby. And a lot of guys got into the hobby for FOMO, fear of missing out. They see that you can get into it for a couple few bucks and be a part of something. And that's rad. Who doesn't want to be a part of something? Whether it's family, club, system, whatever. You want to be a part, you know, and still be an individual. 
And so these folks get to go to probably the most poisonous place for a, a diecast collector. They go to Facebook. They join one of these groups and they ask a question because it's a question to them. Someone will help them. Hey, is this a super treasure hunt? I don't know. I'm new to the hobby. And they love to, you know, it's smart to admit you're new to the hobby, but it also puts a target on you. New to the hobby and the target, I'll explain the target later, but I'm new to the hobby. I wonder if it's a super treasure hunt. Now, someone, a human will actually help. Be like, yeah, it is because there's that gold somewhere or it's not or something. But then the amount of dicks that just want to come and put in their two cents and be a dick is just ridiculous. Let's talk about the motivation for that. One, jealous one's envy. You know that that super is no longer within your grasp, so you're you're upset. You know you you don't know if that person found that super at your local store or not, but they did. So congrats to them. And you're in your head, you're probably like, oh, they won't appreciate it because they don't know anything about it until we get to enlighten them, let them know, put that one in a clamshell, whatever it may be. You know. So if it's not jealous one's envy, what is it? Real talk? You don't want more competitors. Not that we don't want the collecting hobby to grow, because everybody wants it to grow, and that's what adds a lot more appeal and value to your stuff. But nobody wants more. Every other collector, even the ones you love, I love Big Matt. That's my homie, but I know he's a competitor. Not really, because... We take care of each other. But at the same time, I recognize that, hey, if I'm not out there hunting, he might be out there hunting and find something that I want. But what's cool, he wasn't a great example because we really help each other out. He's my friend. That person, that, that dick in the comments, doesn't want another collector. So they want to scare you out of the hobby. And it's worked a lot. It's worked too much. And the amount of posts I see from even OG collectors that are just had enough of... Everyone putting so much effort into it is what it comes down to. There's, you know, younger folks that are available to go do hunts all day and everywhere or what have you. But it's really adding more competition. No one wants that competition. Now, if you didn't have competition, would the hunt be as fun? No, it wouldn't. Um, am I wrong? No, we can look at the stats. Here's some stats we found. eBay searches are down. 47% over last year. So almost half. Now, yes, that the factors in that are, are a number. You got the fallouts. You got the, the, the people who don't want to pay those fees on top of the shipping. Um, you've got, you know, other outlets to sell on. So the Facebooks and the, um, and the whatnots, you know. And I, I'm an ambassador and whatnot. And I, I thank you guys for inviting me to be there. I'm not sure if it's healthy and or if it's great. Um, it seems to be kind of a, a little bit of everything. You know, in some cases it's a bargain basement, some cases it's an opportunity to find Hot Wheels you, you couldn't find, you know? So, you, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I do see that there is also a negative light to it. And a negative light is the fact that you're already putting such, such competitor, such competitive collectors into another competitive platform where you got to auction. Now trust that, some of these folks that don't have enough money to outbid you on those castings, they're probably hanging up on the show like a little hurt and maybe a less motivated to continue the hobby. Now, it's not up to you to cater to people's feelings. Get your stuff, take care of you. You, you got to put on your, your, your oxygen mask first. You can't help anyone else if you don't. But at the same time, we can be conscious and, and you can can be aware you know so I don't know I don't know what I'm saying I just I just hope it becomes more of a uh, a positive positive community to be in that's all that's all but it won't happen without us you know there's also the contributing factor of like I said you know is this a super or not just that whole chase segment and even above and beyond that is this even a chase? You know, you use, you know, you use these majorette examples, the gold wheels. They're not chases. It's the rose gold cars, but this is going to continually be argued. And, you know, really the only way to find out, oh, such a cool car, you know, is to talk to the right people. Let's use the Batmobile, the pink Batmobile. 
Is it a chase? It's not a chase. It is a chase. They said this, they said that. You know, I called them. Gonna go ahead. Oh, it's like the. Remember when you could have ring tests? Hey, how are you? Hey, how can I help you? Oh yeah, I'm. I hey, my name's Walter. I am. Uh, I'm desperately trying to figure out this riddle to one of your guys's cars. Uh, and it's the Jada Pink Batmobile. Is there anyone who could answer if that's a chase or not for us? And I say for us, I, I have uh, a YouTube a, channel. Uh, we, it isn't, it isn't, I guess you could say. Uh, there is some that, if it's on the Jada Next Level, it will be an exclusive. <clears throat> is that the one you're looking at, or are you looking at the one that you can buy on Target? Uh, the one I bought at Target. I bought it in the store. Yes, no, it's not. So that's not. So there's one that's on next level. Is it any different yeah. than than the ones we bought? Or um, it isn't. I believe it's just. I don't know exactly what's special about it. I don't work in the design team. I do apologize. Oh no! Don't um, apologize. I did get in, I did get informed because there have been a lot of calls regarding this item. If it is a chase item, <clears throat> and they did let me know. Give me one moment. I'll pull that up. So it is. It's. It's not. Um. The one that sold at Target isn't the Chase one. Okay. Uh, for the future pink edition um, in the car movies, it has to be, it's going to be limited quantities, but it's going to be, I believe it's going to only be on Jada Next Level. Got it. Well, that's, that's, that will, yeah. that, that would obviously, you know, help, uh, help us collectors, you know, better understand, but that's a huge clarity. I'm going to do my best to share it with my subscribers and let them know that, hey, this is a situation and, and totally understandable. So I'm just glad you were available to answer it for me. No worries. We're here to help. All right. And partner, your name was again? Desiree. De Desiree. I'm Walter. And if you ever, if you want to hear or watch, it's the hotline of diecast on YouTube. And I appreciate what you guys are doing, okay. everyone. So thank you so much. No time. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. All right. Ciao for now. Well, that was, that was hella cool. Thank you for talking with me, Desiree. And uh, I, I like to think this is going to help enlighten our community. I think the chase thing is is is, is difficult already, and this is going to add some clarity. And yeah, add clarity. Thank you, thank you for that, and give me your permission to use that uh, conversation on the show. If you guys aren't already, get whomever's permission. Got to have both parties' consent. That's that's nationwide. So. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, and cool. Oh, I forgot two cars real quick. How did I forget this? I did come across a hot wagon set. I had to get this. And you know, I love wagons. It's really weird because it's a two door wagon, but it's got a dog in the back. Look at look at old Fido. Picked this up from the hot wagon set. And one of the two cars I was chasing. Now, people, reasons to get excited, excited about that set, although it's the, the $3 a piece set. Look at the wheels. Look at the wheels. Did you see the wheels? You know, I mean, it's Hot Wheels is throwing out some new wheels right now. And that's awesome sauce. We could use some fresh, you know, a little freshen up, you know. Just, you know, some lipstick on our pigs. That's hella cool. So, uh, and I apologize, I didn't show you guys that, but. The Noisemaker, <laughs> the Stanley Tumbler. I posted this on my page, I was able to buy two. What happened was I go to Target to get some Hot Wheels and this assistant manager, I, you know, it's my Target, so I know the face. Uh, he was walking out, he had two in his hand, so of course I watched. And he just sat him down on the, the public sales table was talking to another management type person and it looked like an employee basically stashed him. So we put them back out for public sale. Right time, right place. So I was like, well, I'm going to grab them both, you know? And so I posted that I had one, an extra one, if anyone needed. First comment I get on my page. This isn't diecast. This needs to be taken down. 
Who's that? John Sisler? Bro, my page. I'm going to do whatever I want. Cool. But thank you to everyone who lit him up in the comments, though. Uh, that was cool. I, I, I like to think I got your back at some point in the future, too, if need be. That whole thing, man. I really, I really am exposing myself now. But so there was that. There was uh, someone said you should buy Hot Wheels. You should have bought Hot Wheels. Cut. I'm a grown ass man. I'm gonna buy whatever I want if I can afford to buy what I want. I hope you would do the same. And we ended up talking uh, through that conversation, and it worked out in the end. But at first, I was in the ether, and. Uh, the, the, the end of it was he was he was like I thought you were just being trendy I've been trending for a long time then notice my coffee cup oh I've been getting drunk on Stanley for a long time how I made my coffee for said coffee cup Probably should have cleaned it out. Uh, my go-to driving water bottle because it fits my Euro van really well too. Uh, and it's just water. Mm. Not like I was covering it up as if it was vodka, but I, I reserved that for water. I also reserved this for water. This thing's beautiful for Target. I go in there, I fill this up at the Target triple filtered little station, man. Me and my dog are good for the day when I'm working the farm. I use my work cut. It's got a little hanger there for the fence. Cut. I got a lunchbox. Pardon me. I'm not trendy. I rarely follow anyone's lead. I'm almost a no gods, no bosses guy. I do believe in Jesus, though. I'm, I'm, I think it's safe for us to all believe in something if it's anyway and we're not going to go down that but what i can tell you i'm not trendy i'm a trendsetter i've been a trendsetter all my life that's the way i apply my my the way i walk this earth i'm gonna do something cool i'm gonna do something new and different and as best to, i can to my ability that's what i do so I'm glad we got to the end of that com conversation and comment and, and hopefully there's some clarity there because uh, it needs to be that, you know, and, and to the guy that was, uh, this isn't die cast. Well, I know. And if you're so upset about it, you're probably a one dimensional person in my mind. You know, you probably only collect Hot Wheels. Maybe there's a bit of an assumption there, but the way you're putting it off does that way. Uh, me, I collect die cast I collect ammo and I collect supplies okay supplies when shit hits the fan as much as I love this 959 it's not gonna be what I grab I'm grabbing my gun some ammo a flashlight and some supplies that's me the whole thing about the word should tread lightly I mean I just recently had someone who was like you should use a turntable. The way that should have been approached is, hey, have you considered using a turntable? Because I, as a viewer, would be able to see the cars better. And or, hey, as a viewer, in my personal opinion, I think it might help your show. Or, damn it, just please do it. You know, or whatever it may be. But should? It's a tough word to use, you know. Um, a lot of tough things out there right now. There is, uh, I'm desperate to find some cool YouTube channels to watch. I don't really, TV is kind of killing me. It's production stuff is, is kind of killing me. I think we've all opened our eyes to be in a realistic world. So that's what I look for. And YouTube keeps suggesting that Sean guy to me, you know, I think he's doing well getting some traction. He's definitely not my cup of tea. Uh, but keep suggesting him. So I'm trying to get through that, but, um, and then it'll take me some guys who like have a show voice, you know, hey, welcome to the chat. You know, if that's not how you talk <laughs> daily, I, I feel like that sometimes 
that's just not what I'm looking for. Uh, and, and, and a lot of people are going to be invited in by a lot of different things. And, and maybe maybe the, 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 the show voice is one of them, but um, that's just not what I'm looking for. And I desperately look for channels and there's guys who have like, you know, small circles that make some cool stuff. And guys have huge circles that make terrible stuff. And you just get all this intermix. And I stumbled across this one uh, Hot Wheels racer, Luke, little kid, cool guy. And I stumbled across him and his, it was uh, giving my dad a super treasure hunt. Watch that episode. It was rad, dude. It was just cool. And because uh, that's the way the hobby could, would, and used to be. And then, so I, I subscribed. I even shared it. Shared it on my Instagram. It was like, you know, one of my new favorite channels. So, of course, I'm continuing to watch the channel, get to his community page. And he plugs up the Civic. And his post was, unfortunately, this is going to break scalpers' hearts or something, you know. And I'm like, how did you get in that mindset already? Scalpers. Scalpers. Resellers. Okay? Everyone does it. And it's... Doesn't matter if it's in a collectible market. You know what? This thing resells for a hundred bucks. Double my money. The pink one? Buy for 50, sell it for 250. I'm not a wealthy person, so any opportunity I can to make some supplemental income, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. But they're not scalpers. I mean, yeah, whatever. That's just a different word for resellers, okay? Now here's here's what we gotta remember. They're a huge part of the hobby's re-stimulation, you know. Uh, a lot of them are bred from the COVID era or the or the flea market sellers and all that know that you need hot product to sell. It's just what it is. But it stimulated our hobby. It got Mattel and the I know 64s and the all, everyone start putting out die cast, hard and good stuff. Thank you for that. Scalpers are also available to be friends. They don't always have to be just a reseller to you. If you make a friend out of them, I'm in a Target, I found that one Porsche, and I didn't find it this way. It was laying on the on the counter. But I know resellers that will call other friends or resellers, and this is their approach. Hey, I'm at Target. There's one Porsche hauler left. I've got a couple already. Do you need it? Yeah, I need it. Okay. I'll stash it for you. Insane. You know, right? And it's just, that's what it really is in a lot of cases. And they do want to sell them for value because our collectibles should have a value. They should. That's what makes them collectible. Not the rarity of them. The rarity influences the price. The, the after aftermarket price. So, so but to circle back, Luke... I really like what you're doing, man. Just a young young dude doing die casts. It's apparent you get some influence from what you're seeing out there, and that's cool. Uh, and you have such good ability to do more than just sharing new new drops from other people's pages. And that's not a negative thing, dude. Everyone's doing it. I did a couple. Sh I, where do you think I get my shots? You know. But you can do so much more, man. And I think we need a young member like you to uh, to do that. So hopefully. Hopefully you do, man. 